Hi, this is Mark at the Brown Works Wood Shop. And today I want to talk a little bit about clamping on your CNC machine. Uh, some of the things that I've used. There are thousands of different ways how to clamp stuff down on your machine. I'm going to show you a couple of things that I use. Some of the things that work for me. Some of the things that didn't work for me. Um, and it may or may not have the same, uh, you know, may or may not work. In your situation but I just want to show you what I've done now here's a whole bunch of different types of clamps that I've used over the over the years um, anywhere from uh, stops uh, that you clamp down and it, it you know, gives you a nice stopping point um, some of the standard little clamps here that you clamp down it'll clamp onto your workpiece uh, there's some advantages, disadvantages of these. And then I've used other types of compression uh, types of clamps. Okay. And whether or not it's on the side or clamping, uh, clamping down, talk a little bit about that. I've used different manufacturers clamps and um, there's a bunch of them out there that do all the same thing. Um, uh, quite a few of them that I've used is the Rockler. They're a little bit more expensive, but some of them have a little bit better adjustments uh, than I've seen other brands have. But that all depends on, on how you're using them. <coughs> so, one of the first things is these, these stops. Um, and how they fit. Most all all that I have fit on the T-Track. Um, a lot of the CNC machines are going to have T-Track like this. This has a lot. Um, now you want to make sure your clamps fit into the T-Track. Okay, you're going to have a carriage bolt of some sort that's going to fit in. Now there's some T-Tracks. Like, like this fits a different size T-Track, so the, the, these won't work if you had these larger ones on this particular bed. <clears throat> so you might want to use clamps that use the T-Track, or at one point I tried using a, um, a board, uh, a jig that I made to kind of fit onto the bed. get a good picture of this here so this this jig that I made had some you know had a square corner um, that I could put my pieces in I had places where I could put um, you know screw down some um, some compression things there and then my piece, I'd have it set up so that my pieces, my work pieces are generally about the same. Uh, and this was having a jig that's set up for your particular use, you know, that, that works fine. Um, if you're doing the same thing over and over again. So I, my material is basically the same size and I could have the jig set up uh, a certain way. <clears throat> so one of the things is if you're going to do this is make sure that your work pieces are consistent as well uh that's one of the things i first found out when i first started out is you know if if you don't have uh, if you're counting on a square piece and it's not square uh things will get a skewed um so we can talk all about that <laughs> whole subject on making sure that you have consistent work pieces um, and how to square things up and not counting on things that you come that you buy out of the store that's going to be square okay so um, you definitely have these types of jigs this is very similar where I have a stopping point and that's where a lot of these um, if you're using uh the the t t-track table 
um, you have these pieces where you can adjust and, and give yourself a good edge um, now one of the things that I've found is depending on what type of uh, cutting you're doing um, I found you know if you're doing like a if your bit is an up cut so it's really pulling on the material a lot of these flat edges um, you know your, your piece is going to slip out of there uh, I think at one point I thought it was a good idea to uh, glue a little piece of rubber on the edge here to hold the piece down well that might have sounded like a good idea at the time but I found even though this rubber is not very thick um, it still has a lot of give and if you're trying to do some precision things uh, when you clamp down onto those pieces um, one piece may compress a little bit more than the next piece and can throw off um, can throw off your 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 work um, so one of the things I said okay I still need to grab a hold of the material uh, but I can't have it compress so uh, I started gluing some sandpaper on these uh, clamps so that it won't compress but it gives me a good um, a good surface that my material is not going to slip so this worked out uh, pretty well and that's kind of where I um, you know I, I keep keep a side that had uh, this flat edge but had the sandpaper so it would hold the material another thing I did to help hold the material down is I don't know if you can see it but this edge here it does have a slight bevel so that when my material is in there there is a slight bevel that hangs over so it won't pop up um, on an uh, up cut okay so that's one of the, the things I thought how can I stop it from popping up and just by putting a, a little bevel in there it doesn't have to be much just enough to um, that your piece isn't going to pop up okay so that was using this board and I did the same thing kind of without the board, still using the, the track. Um, I came up with a way to uh, have a, a straight edge that's always going to be consistent. And one of the bad things about clamping directly onto your, your bed is if you need to cut through your piece, which my products I need to cut through, uh, need to cut completely through um, so you don't want to cut into your metal um, bed you need to have some type of spoil board and uh, you know having a jig that was a complete board uh, but I didn't have much flexibility on where to put um, you know clamps and you know, with the spoil board it was so big uh, without screwing down your clamps which you can do if they're not going to move uh, around on you um, what I found to do is I just use a little spoil board uh, just the size of my material and then I clamp down around it uh, again I want to have a consistent edge that's not moving uh, and then the rest of my clamps I can move around now since my my pieces, I don't want them to be, you got a lot of moving around here. You want to uh, line up your piece. Um, 
Now trying to clamp on top of there, I try to conserve as much of my material as possible. Um, and having clamps on your material, uh, they just get away, get in the way sometimes of your, uh, of your routing or your, your cutting. Um, so a lot of times I'll use, um, little springboard pieces. So instead of clamping directly onto the material with my clamp, I'll have a clamp that pushes down on a little springboard. And I can do that all the way around. So that if the bit does try to come in contact with my clamp, I'm just running into a piece of wood I'm not running into a metal clamp. So that worked for a good amount of time for me. Um, so again, I had, I, I tried using a lot of these, um, you know, the compression clamps that push in on the side, but I found a lot of my, even uh, using some angled pieces of, uh, um, stoppers uh i still found that my pieces might still pull out if you're not too careful so that's why i try to go with more of a downward pressure but using um pieces of wood as like springboards to hold pieces down really really tight now the other way that a lot of people will use uh clamp the stuff down or at least hold their material down is sometimes with double-sided tape and I don't think there's anything wrong with that some people don't like using the double-sided tape uh, but I found I do have some grips that I make that are really really thin that um, you know no amount of clamping is going to help so I definitely need to use some double-sided tape and they come in uh, a variety you know if you only need a little little piece little scotch tape size piece uh, this is pretty inexpensive but if you're dealing with larger pieces of material trying to get larger uh, double-sided tape this can get really expensive um, to tape your material down so there's another little trick that a lot of people use. I'm going to show you that in a second here. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Is instead of buying some of this expensive double-sided tape, you can use plain old masking tape and double it up. So let me uh, set the camera down and I'll show you what I mean here. So you use a little bit of painter's tape one so it's stuck down there really good put a little bit of baking soda oh that's way too much just a little bit because that acts as a catalyst with the uh, super glue clean that up a little bit later so it helps harden the super glue a lot a lot quicker And the super glue does harden pretty quick. Get my super glue out. I think I'm almost out of super glue here. Of 
this is enough super glue. And that gives you a good good double sided tape. Um, it's not going to pull apart easily since it's uh, the mask tape. You can still get it off. Um, but that gives you a lot bigger surface if you need a, a lot wider type of double sided tape is to make your own. So I know a lot of people do that. Um, I don't really find the need because my pieces are small. So the little scotch, uh, scotch tape size is fine with me. Pry these apart. And then you can finally pry them apart. <laughs> and pull off your tape. So... I just know that's uh, one another way a lot of people clamp stuff down is with uh, your double-sided tape. Okay. All right, let's look at... Uh, let's see, there's a couple other different ways, methods, to clamp pieces down. A lot of people use. Let's put this, uh, this stop on here. So if you have a stop, let me grab a stop here. And then you have your piece of material. And if you're going to be doing repetition, in a good spot uh, a lot of people will use some type of wedge so that you have your material you can place it in and you place your wedge in oh, the whole bed moves so I know this piece isn't moving so then the work on that you can remove the wedge put in your next piece put the wedge back in so wedges are very helpful if you're doing uh, some repetitive stuff um, that are about the same size. So just use that wedge. Okay. Uh, another type of, of clamp, other than the, the non-moving, uh, they do have some that are basically have a, a cam inside that compresses or opens up by using this lever uh, on this cam it doesn't it doesn't move too much uh, maybe a couple millimeters but it's enough if you're doing repetition And again, your, your pieces are close. Let me push this cam in. Again, these are probably a little bit more expensive than using a, uh, a wedge. Um, but it basically does similar function there. Okay. So now let's look at uh, my newer CNC machine and show you some of the clamps I use over there. Okay, on this CNC machine it has a vacuum table and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, but it also has these uh, T-tracks, uh, the slots, and you can have uh, your little... Um, your little clamps here to press down on the corners of your workpiece, or I'm using this to clamp down a spoil board. And then on top of the spoil board, I made my own 
uh, wider clamps. These will clamp completely across the piece, you know, from one T-track, you know, to the other. Um, now, one of the things I work with is a lot of thin wood material. And depending on the weather and if there's a lot of humidity in the air, sometimes these pieces of wood can curl up on you. So they may not fit. They may not fit flat on the table. So I designed these so that I could um, clamp my pieces down to kind of flatten out my pieces. Yeah, so having both of these clamps down across the top where it, you would normally have the, the curve, it's gonna keep this piece flat and secured to the table. It's not gonna move around. Um, so again, this is just one little, little way to clamp stuff down that works for me. So let me show you the vacuum table piece. Okay, this vacuum table, it's a, it's like a hard plastic rubber um, type of table, it has grids in it. Now again, you don't want to cut into here because that and that ruins the uh, the suction that you'll get out of this. Now it does have uh, several areas where it has covers over the actual vacuum uh, holes. So this whole bed, you can um, you can control what areas you want to have suction under. So if I only want this small section to have the suction, then I can uncover one of these. And then you have this gasket that you can use. Let's see, let's uh, say I wanted my piece uh, to be about there. So I want to put this gasket in. And we'll go to about there. How big I want to go up to here. So now I have a section that has a, a suction hole and is covered uh, with this gasket. So when the suction turns on, it's going to, uh, my vacuum is going to be uh, isolated to this little area. And you can do that with all kinds of different uh, configurations here. Uh, some of the more sophisticated beds, you, you can actually have levers that control different sections of your, of your bed. Uh, but this little gasket helps uh, in this situation. So I'm going to turn this on. It's going to get a little loud. Um, but then I'm going to show you the, uh, the suction force that it has. Now some of the, uh, now you can get kits to um, turn your bed into a suction uh, to have this vacuum capability. Uh, the vacuum may not be as powerful. Um, this, this table is very powerful. Uh, there's no way this piece would move around. So one of the important thing is make sure that you get your piece uh, square or how you, uh, how you want it situated. 
So and I believe some people out there, I think they have, uh, this is a little piece of MDF uh, used for spoil board. Um, now I've seen only some videos of some mats that you could put down that is porous enough that the vacuum would come through uh, because you, you still don't want to have a uh, you know a, a live a good piece here that you're going to cut all the way through uh, because as soon as you cut through one of these you lose your vacuum um, but like I said I have not uh, actually used them but there's some mats or some porous material uh, that will have the suction and it still has enough suction to, to come through to hold your material on top of that. I, I don't have proof. If anybody out there has used any of these, I'd love to know more about it. Um, but I just haven't seen any uh, that would work for me. Um, sometimes they say this MDF is porous enough to do that, but uh, even planing this down, it's you're still not going to get suction through here um, that I've found. So that's the uh, a couple different methods that I use uh, to clamp my material down for my CNC. Um, definitely if you guys have better better ways of clamping things down I'd love to hear about it because I like to know uh, new ways of doing things how different people are doing it uh, that could be better than than my methods um, so definitely leave, leave a comment if you uh, have better success clamping stuff down and if you want to see some more of how I do things in my shop, please subscribe. So I thank you and bye for now.